the sovereign. Exactly. Were you going to say something? Uh, I was just going to say, I think sometimes like people get mad when when you criticize a leader they like right. when, you, when you're talking about them. And one thing, one of the things I like to tell people when they get mad is, oh, you're causing division, you're causing strife. These things are important. It's necessary. And basically, the unity of the visible church cannot be upheld at the expense of biblical truth, meaning division is caused by truth. Mm. Proper division, right? Yep. Like the scriptures talk about that. You, you're sort to cast of. people out. Yep. Yep. You're to you're to separate out false teachers. That's what you're supposed to do. The, the epistles in the New Testament, they and Jesus Himself, they always talk about correcting false teaching. Mm. Almost all yeah. of them universally. Why do they say that? Because it's an important thing that we are called to do. Right. Well, and so, and like what you've described is is sort of an outpouring from what we see from churches like this, which is don't right. don't cause any division. The point is to get people to come into church so that they're saved one way or another. And then, and then there's this fictional idea of togetherness and like in community and all this stuff that's not real because there's no help for anyone who's struggling. There's, you know, the counseling is poor or whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. they might have good programs, but at that level, you can't, you can't shepherd people with thousands of people. In right. Your you can't access a celebrity. No. Right. So, yeah. So that's our starting point. God's totally sovereign. If he's not sovereign, he's not God. He's not somewhat sovereign. He's not kind of sovereign. It's all or nothing. Right. And if you attempt to pit Jesus somehow against the prior revelation of God that's already revealed clearly who God is and that he's not thwarted, then you have a major problem because Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. He's God in the flesh. Mm Mm-hmm. So he can also not be thwarted. His purpose is the same as the Father and as the Spirit. Right. Jesus' own words, all that the Father gives to me come to me, and I will never lose them. John you know, we're talking about drawing, and all of those men will come to him. Yep. That is the power of God. Every right. person that the Father draws comes to Christ. There's no preventing them. Right. Mm-hmm. It's it's the sovereign work of God, changing right. hearts of stone into hearts of flesh, giving people new desires, new loves. That's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about the uh you know some sort of as norman geisler put it divine rape we're talking about the loving act Mm. of god changing men's hearts changing them Mm. from uh, sinners who hate him who curse his name every day to ones who love him and want to worship him it's a it's a beautiful act god's sovereignty is not something to fear it's something to to take refuge in to glorify him for to love him for 